No, folks, the Halloween decorations have not come down on set yet. I kind of find they're in a transitional mode here. We're not going directly into Christmas decorations, despite uh, the red shirt. But we are going to be looking towards, obviously, taking this set and molding it a little bit. And molding it a little bit more into a Thanksgiving slash fall setting. Uh, so some of the stuff stays here, because pumpkins and leaves and all that's kind of a fall thing. But then, you know, the spider stuff, the little... Uh, Hanging ghosts and scarecrows. That, that, that's kind of getting too Halloween-y. We'll, we'll figure that out here. And you know why I'm even talking about that? It's because uh, Nintendo's been figuring it out as well. This is a transition year for Nintendo, right? They've already told us they are going to be revealing the Nintendo Switch successor in the next uh, few months here. The next handful of months anyways. They said by the end of the fiscal year. So knowing that this has been a transition year you would figure it'd be kind of a slow year for nintendo and we know it's been anything but slow uh we've had a number of games come out like literally every single month this year there's been something from nintendo whether it was a new game or a remake or remaster but uh in particular friend of the channel paul gale network decided to look at the last 64 days at nintendo and if you can't tell paul gale network friend of the channel loves the number 64. He uses it all the time. He uses it in my workout regime I have with him. He uses it when he's making predictions. He uses it when he's talking about Nintendo. Yeah, I think he has a little bit of an affinity for the N64 era. Uh, but if you actually look over the last 64 days, you'll notice Nintendo has been extremely busy and has done a ton of crap for a company that is in the middle of a transition. Uh, let's just say Nintendo is more busy than ever, and obviously, this probably all culminates in a Switch 2 reveal and release at some point in 2025. So, let's go ahead and dive in to the dates here and what Nintendo has had going on, uh, and courtesy to Paul Gale Network because he did a giant tweet on this, which I'm going to put on the screen after I remind you guys that if you're enjoying this stuff and you want to keep up to date on all things Nintendo, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? All right, Paul Gale. Here's the tweet. All right, so as you see here, it says some interesting things. It says, in this Nintendo 64 day time span, which is nine weeks in one day, here is a look back at the fun we got from Nintendo and those proximal. So back on August 27th, we had the Indie World plus Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase. Then on 829, we had the release of Emio the Smiling Man Famicom Detective Club. Then... Back on September 1st, we had LEGO Deku Tree. Then on the 5th of September, we had the new Splatoon 3 Amiibo. Then, back on September 13th, we had Splatoon 3's Grand Festival. Then, back on September 26th, we had The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom come out. Back on the 26th as well, we also saw the Nintendo Switch Lite Hyrule Edition come out, and it's still pretty easy to get at most retailers. Uh, then on October 1st, we got Pikmin at the San Diego Zoo, kind of a local event, but still pretty neat and was advertised by Nintendo. Also on October 1st, we had the Lego Super Mario World Mario and Yoshi set come out. Then on the 2nd, we all know the Nintendo Museum launched. Then if you go all the way to October 9th, we had the Nintendo Sound Clock, a.k.a. Alarmo <laughs> come out. Uh, yes, right. They announced it and released the same day. Pretty crazy. Uh, then on the 10th of October, we had F Zero GP Legend plus F Zero Climax, right? That stuff getting added in. Uh, then on the 17th of October, we had Super Mario Party Jamboree. Then on the 18th of October, we had the Super Nintendo World Orlando announcement. It was just an announcement of it. Uh, nothing really more than that. Uh, then we had on the 22nd of October, Masahiro Sakurai with Devil. Development confirmation of a brand new game, by the way. Pretty cool. Uh, on 1023, so October 23rd, we have the Nintendo Switch online playtest program. And then on the 25th, they put Banjo and Tui over on the Nintendo Switch online service. Then on the 28th, we got Shadow Man and Turok 2 Seas of Evil also added to the Nintendo Switch online service. And then on the 29th, we saw Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition get announced for March 20th of 2025. And then, of course, the very next day, 
on the 30th, the day before Halloween, we got the Nintendo Music Announcement. Now, I want to read what Paul Gale Network has to say here because I feel like this context adds even more. So let's go deeper into what he said in this tweet. I have been a video game enthusiast for 37 years, working in said industry for 24 years. I have seen droughts. I have experienced considerable gaps in releases or general news. This is not one of those times. Nintendo is firing on all cylinders. And though everyone is hopeful for that Nintendo Switch 2 announcement, if it doesn't happen soon, it's just not the optimal time for Nintendo. It has to be the perfect timing, as uninterrupted as possible. For now, hopefully you can look back on what we got recently and say, yeah, that was a lot. Also, be excited for what's to come in the immediate future because, <laughs> hey, just next week, we have the financial report coming on the 5th, which, by the way, the financial report is when they ended up announcing the Switch 2 was going to be revealed this fiscal year. They technically announced it like immediately after the financial report. And then we have Mario and Luigi Brothership coming on the 7th, which, by the way, shout out to Mario and Luigi Brothership, brand new trailer today. Uh, you guys can look at that right now. Look, guys, I, I do think that it's important to note that as much as we talk about Switch 2 around here and as hype as things are and the copium and hopium and the speculation and everything we have going on, that it is important to note that Nintendo has been doing a lot. They've been a very, very, very busy company. And throughout all of this, we know certain other things. Like We know a Mario movie is in the works behind the scenes. We know a Legend of Zelda live action movie is in the works behind the scenes. That We will eventually get news on those as well. They, we also know that Metroid Prime 4 Beyond is coming. That is something they've already announced. We know Legends EA is coming. And lost in this whole shuffle is the fact there was this massive Terra leak, uh, which was unintended news by the Pokemon company out there as well. So Nintendo's been very busy. And in talking about how busy Nintendo has been, it kind of gives us perspective. And I feel like that's what Paul Gale meant by this tweet was to give perspective that while we're all impatient and we all want certain things to happen, reality is Nintendo's still doing a lot anyways. This is not the old Nintendo. This is not the 3DS Wii U days Nintendo or end of Wii generation Nintendo or end of most generations Nintendo when there was just a lack of news and just a lot of uh, gaps in just even hearing that Nintendo exists. Nintendo's been very consistent. I mean, that's 64 days and, gosh, by my count, at least like 20 things that happened in 64 days, a little bit more than that. That is a lot to consider for a company that's transitioning. Uh, Nintendo is finding a way to transition that also happens to involve still making money. And I think that's the important part here. Like, yeah, we don't have like an N64 Classic Edition this holiday, but we have Alarmo. And Alarmo might go on to sell a few million units. Who knows? But that is something that Nintendo is making money on at $100 a pop. And when you look at all the rest of the stuff with the game announcements and the releases and Masahiro Sakurai confirming that he's working on a game, likely for Nintendo, but we don't obviously know any more details until that game is revealed. You know, brand new games coming, new ports and remasters and... You, know, you throw in the rumor mill, right? You know, stuff, extra stuff we've had in like third party games that are being remastered, supposedly coming to Switch next year. We got that from Brazil. So you mix that in with some rumors and, and you just end up with a very full slate. If you wonder why we've had so much to talk about since August, yeah, a lot of Switch 2 content videos, but all of these things were things we covered at my channel. Like, I'm looking at this list. Uh, we were live streaming the Indie World and the Nintendo Re Partner Showcase. I talked about Emio the Smiling Man multiple times, especially when Nintendo was back was teasing it before we even knew what it was. Um, we talked about the Lego Deku Tree on the channel. We talked about the Splatoon 3 Amiibo combined with the Grand Festival multiple times, sometimes even in the Switch 2 videos. We talked about that stuff. Uh, Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. I have like a dozen videos about that game on my channel. Still playing it right now. We talked about the Hyrule Edition when it was originally announced. Uh, we didn't talk about the Pikmin stuff at the San Diego Zoo, to be fair. Uh, that's just something that, you know, it was too, a bit too of a localized event for me to really make a big deal out of it. But it is something Nintendo was doing. Uh, we did talk about the Lego Super Mario World Mario and Yoshi. We talked about that on the channel. We reported on that. We obviously had uh, the Nintendo Museum. We've had multiple videos on the Nintendo Museum. Uh, and we read to the Nintendo Museum Direct. Uh, the Alarmo stuff. Yeah. 
Of course, we talked about that on the channel, right? Uh, F0, GP, uh, a lot of the NSO stuff is kind of stuff that we stayed away from. We talked about it on our live streams, but we didn't cover it in a more traditional way. So, you know, there's one thing we didn't really pay too much attention to. Uh, we did a live stream for Super Mario Party Jamboree and a couple of videos on Jamboree. Uh, you know, we have the Super Nintendo World Orlando announcement. We have talked about that just one time, but we did talk about it. Uh, we definitely talked about the Sakurai game and development stuff. Uh, speculated, I do, I do think it's a new smash bros personally for switch too but we'll see uh and yeah we just talked about uh xenoblade chronicles and nintendo music in our video yesterday that were the two uh topics we talked about before the switch 2 rumor and one of those topics the xenoblade chronicles x definitive edition was even put into the thumbnail so people act like we just talked about switch 2 around here we actually talked about all of this stuff it's just you know it's 64 days of like 20 something announcements and in those 64 days we put out like 70 videos right so uh yeah a lot of those other videos were just strictly switched to i do think that uh i i nintendo's just in a good space and i am still at team 2024 i said this last video until tuesday i think the investors meeting could be very telling uh and then that will determine to me if i'm leaving team 2024 for good for team 2025 what i can tell you is regardless of a reveal this year or not for switch 2 i am team first half release next year until proven otherwise uh we should be getting some shipping data updates here in the next week or two and that will again further my belief or make me back off a of first half next year because i'm a believer in facts i'm a huge believer in facts we talk about speculation we talk about rumors and we could talk about all that stuff but facts don't lie and if switch 2 enters mass manufacturing at any point in 2024 then it's coming out first half next year they're not going to let millions of systems sit on a shelf and cost nintendo money that's just they've never done that before in the entire history company they haven't done that other companies don't do that you don't just leave millions of systems sitting on a shelf you get those out to consumers so uh that's where you know the shipping data actually really really matters it can it might be those little bits of information about the system but what really matters is has Switch 2 entered mass manufacturing? As of August, the answer was no. August, however, saw a ramp up, a huge ramp up in part production for Switch 2. If we see another massive ramp up here for the month of September, because remember shipping data is two month old data. So when we get the new public shipping data in a week or two, and we see a massive ramp up again, that's just a heavy indicator that it's either in mass manufacturing or the like half step before that and it went into mass manufacturing in october either way we'll get that data soon uh i'm just really happy that we're getting a jam-packed thing from nintendo and who knows we're not done by the way there's still it's first day of november like we got two more months nintendo could have a bunch more game announcements and other good stuff going on so stay tuned right here uh for all the latest from nintendo i know it seems like it's a lot of switch too but i promise once Nintendo releases that pressure valve and unveils the system, you're going to see a ton of content on our channel about games, about, uh, you know, obviously tangible things about Switch 2, and so much more. Obviously, we're always going to cover rumors and leaks around here. That is something we do, but uh, they won't be so centralized on just one specific thing like it feels right now. Uh, and this is where I also be honest with you guys at the end of the video. Um... One, I'm trying to respond to all the comments that we that we have now. I'm trying my best to make sure I respond to everyone, positive, negative, neutral, in between. Uh, you know, whether it's criticism, whether it's positivity, I'm trying to respond to everyone. I want to give a shout out again to Thunderstash Gaming. We had a conversation behind the scenes that maybe inspired me a bit to uh, to do that. I'd actually been going in the opposite direction where I was just not going to even read comments, let alone respond. And now I'm taking some time to respond, uh, usually in some humorous ways, sometimes in some serious ways, but trying to let the whole community know that I do care about what you have to say, because I do. I was reading the comments anyways. Even as I was cutting back, it wasn't like I stopped reading the comments. I want you to guys know how much you guys mean to me. Whether you really dislike my content, or you really enjoy my content, I still appreciate that you took a few moments out of your day to stop by. And uh, the big thing about uh, this Switch 2 stuff is this year, you know, I looked through all these announcements over the last, you know, day, and outside of like Echoes of Wisdom, a lot of this stuff is stuff that I just in particular am not that like, you know, gung ho about. I'm someone that has been very spoiled during the Switch era, where every year there's been massive, major, multiple games 
uh, for me to cover and gush over and get excited and bring all the latest news and rumors about. And I've been very fortunate this whole generation to be able to do that. This is the first year where pretty much most of what Nintendo put out are things that my interest levels in them are quite low. I can tell you right now, personally, in terms of what I spent money on, I only bought two games published by Nintendo this year. I'm not saying I don't have more of their games, but that would be because Nintendo sent me a copy. I personally only pre-ordered and purchased two games this year from Nintendo. So my interest level has been quite low in Nintendo's output this year, but my interest level is quite high in the Nintendo Switch 2. So when you see a huge skew towards covering Switch 2, it's just the only thing going on that we know is going on, because Nintendo told us back in May, that I'm actually excited for. So that's why my content's all about that. And I would love for the conversations around Switch 2 uh, to shift, and it really shifts once it's revealed. Hopefully we get some information on Tuesday where Furukawa at least narrows the window of reveal down, or maybe Furukawa tells us nothing, right? We'll just have to wait and see when that financial briefing with the Q&A happens really, really early Tuesday morning. All right, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. It's not October anymore. I was about to say happy Halloween. Happy belated Halloween. Uh, let's look forward to the next holiday we have coming up. For me, it's, it's Thanksgiving. I don't know what the next holiday is for you. Bye, everyone.